Welcome to our brand new series of videos here at Free Talk. This show is called Phrasal Verbosity, and that is a play on words on phrasal verb and verbosity. Now, verbosity is the quality of using more words than needed to express something. If you want to say something but you go on and on using words and words, you are being verbose, worthy. Now, for us non-native English speakers, that may be the case when we need to learn phrasal verbs, because there are so many of them, and they are all so different, and they are all so difficult to understand and use, that all of this seems daunting, overwhelming. But that's why we are here for. Together, we are going to explore all these thousands of different phrasal verbs, what they mean, how we use them, and we are going to hopefully learn and start using them on our own. Now, the first thing we need to know is what a phrasal verb is. Phrasal verb is a word we use to talk about a number of different combinations of words, usually two or three words from different grammatical categories, usually a verb and a particle, or a verb and a preposition, or a verb and a particle and a preposition. And when we think of these new groups of words, we understand them as one new semantic unit. That means these three words mean one thing. Now, these phrasal verbs are so abundant in English. There are so many of them, and the problem is not so much the number, but the difficulty of understanding what they mean. Because a phrasal verb as a new semantic unit is not the exact meaning of the individual components. Sometimes it is easy to see what words are making a phrasal verb up and then a, uh, extract the meaning. But in the most cases, it is not. Because these meanings are usually idiomatic. For example, if we think of the phrasal verb go out, that is pretty straightforward. It's pretty clear what that means. You go, you move to another place, and that place is out. So if you go out, you exit. You go to the outside of a place. But some other phrasal verbs are not that easy to understand. For example, pick on. What is to pick on? Or sit out. Take a sit, that you sit down but out? No. So what we are going to do in this show is look at some of these phrasal verbs. We're going to start with the most common ones. We're going to see what they mean, how they are used in everyday English language use, like the movies, songs, books, etc. We're going to give you some examples and we're going to give you some time to practice them. Collectively, after you have watched many of these videos, you will have more confidence in using them. You will be more at ease. You will feel more natural when you use them. And trust me, when you use phrasal verbs naturally and automatically, your English will take a turn. Now, we are going to get a little technical here because we need to establish the difference between three different types of phrasal verbs so that you know when we check them how they are going to be used, if they take other words after them, if they can be separated or not. So let's start. Now, the first type of phrasal verb we're going to analyze here is what we call prepositional verbs. And that is a verb plus a preposition. For example, look after, run into, look at. That's a verb plus a preposition. So the characteristics of this type of phrasal verb is that one, they take one particle, after, into, at. But more importantly, these phrasal verbs are always transitive. What does that mean? What does it mean if a verb is transitive? Well, when a verb is transitive, that means that it can take a direct object. If I tell you something like, oh, you know what? Yesterday I ran into... You ran into what or whom? That idea is incomplete. You ran into somebody. You know, yesterday I ran into my uncle. Okay, now the idea is complete. So when we use these phrasal verbs, run into, we necessarily have to have a direct object. Now, we're going to go into more detail as we get into those phrasal verb examples. But the second type of phrasal verbs is what we usually call simply phrasal verbs. And these are a verb plus a particle but this particle is not a preposition. Phrasal verbs can be transitive or intransitive. For example, if I 
think of the phrasal verb bring up, that is a transitive phrasal verb because we need an object. You need something to bring up. If I only say, you know, oh, well, you brought up what? You brought up the subject. You brought up the problem. You brought something up. But if I use a phrasal verb like sit down, that doesn't take an object because I say, well, she sat down. That's enough. She sat down doesn't take an object. So phrasal verbs can be transitive or intransitive. If they are transitive, they can be separated. Let's go back to the example of bring up. If I say, well, uh, I'm sorry to bring this topic up, or I'm sorry to bring up this topic, the two are correct. So I can take bring up, separate them, and put the object in the middle. Or I can put the object at the end. No difference in meaning. The majority of the phrasal verbs we use in English every day are in this category. They are a verb plus a particle, they can be separated, and the object can go in the middle or at the end. The last type of phrasal verbs is what we call phrasal prepositional verb. And that is a verb plus a particle plus a preposition. These verbs are always transitive and they cannot be separated. If I say, for example, stay away from. In this construction, stay is the verb, away is the particle, and from is a preposition. But you always stay away from something. You need a direct object, and the object can go only at the end. Stay out of. Same thing. Stay is a verb, out is the particle, off is the preposition, and we need something. Stay out of trouble. So this is the last type of phrasal verbs. Three words, one verb, one particle, one preposition, not separable, direct object, always at the end. Now, I know that all of this information may seem like a lot right now, and we don't want to get into grammatical detail. It's not what we're here for. So with just this basic information, you will be able to understand how a phrasal verb works. And here's something very important. Phrasal verbs at the end of the day, regardless of whether they are in type number one, type number two, type number three, regardless of whether they are transitive or intransitive, if they can be or not separated, they are verbs. So they will always work as verbs. What does that mean? That means that you can conjugate a phrasal verb in all the possible tenses. If you take the phrasal verb go out, you can say, I go out every night, simple present. I went out last night, simple past. I have gone out with them, present perfect. I will be going out tomorrow, future continuous. It doesn't matter. You can take a phrasal verb and conjugate it in all the tenses you know. They will always remain a verb. So that's it. That's your basic introduction to phrasal verbs. This is only the surface. There is a lot of information beneath this, and we are going to try and cover as much as possible in every episode of Phrasal Verbosity. In every episode, we're going to take one phrasal verb, we're going to explain to you all the meanings they have, how you can use them, if they take or not an object, what they mean, if they are formal, informal, and a long, long, etc. The idea of this is that you get a handle on these phrasal verbs and you start using them because they will definitely make a change in your English. So, by all means, stick around and keep on learning. Keep it simple. Okay, so that's it for the first part. On with the second one. And let's review some of that vocabulary that was on those little green letters on the subtitles. And the first one was daunting. That word daunting is an adjective. 